task force dropping into unknown and very dangerous territory and you lost your intelligence officer and all the plans, what would you do? After a quick cup of tea, you'd obviously send out reconnaissance scouts to find out where the hell you were. And I'm sure that given a similar situation, you'd do the same. When it comes to an unfamiliar study situation, most of us barge straight in. First line of instructions, page one of a study book. Now, you remember that in last week's program, I talked about preparation and organization. And this time, I want to talk about the application to a study learning period. Now, I divide this into four main areas, overview, preview, in-view, and review. I'm going to deal with these in order, so we'll take overview first. The overview is very similar to sending out your reconnaissance scouts. They spy out the information and prevent you from bashing your head into mountains of unfamiliar vocabulary or from leading all your troops into a swamp of bad writing. The overview is really very similar to getting a general outline of the information that you're going to be dealing with. So that means dealing with the table of contents, with graphs, photographs, illustrations, any graphic material. Also in the overview, it's very important that you pay special attention to results, summaries, and conclusions. They summarize for you the information that you're going to be dealing with. So overview, then, is the overall outline. Now that's followed by your preview. Preview is very similar to the overview, but it doesn't deal with the graphics. It deals with the printed text information. In a preview, you're concerned with the beginnings and ends of sections, beginnings and ends of paragraphs. That's where most of the information usually is. The middle information you can get by skimming down with your visual guide to get the general flow of the information from this preview. Preview, of course, is going to be followed by an in-view. Now, the in-view is where you try to get all the information filled in. You're completing the pattern of your information. And it's a po very important at this stage not to spend too much time on those areas which are difficult to grasp. Come back to them later in the review. The review is your final stage, and it's here that you actually begin to make your pattern notes. The notes, of course, you make here and not earlier, because if you made them earlier, you wouldn't really have got all the information, so couldn't have made proper notes. Your final notes, then, will summarize all your information. Now, that, at the moment, is the pattern for application, and I'm going to apply it to a particular situation. Our study is going to be on the history of the location of the mind. Now, obviously, for such a study, I'd be using a large number of books, but here I'm just going to use one. And before actually getting down to the preparation section, which we talked about last week, we'd have to overview the entire book. In order to do that, first, obviously, we get to the table of contents, and using a visual guide, cover the whole section in order to find out basically what the outline of the book is. 
From there, we'd probably go back to the index, have a general peruse of the index to find out the names of the relevant people, the kind of vocabulary and concepts that were going to be used. And then we might go to the review or summary, if the book had one. And in this case, they do. It's called an envoy. And at this stage, we'd quickly go over that again to find out what the general structure of the book was. And in addition to this, you would flip through the entire book to find out what the general lay of the land was. And obviously, you wouldn't do it as fast as I'm doing here. You take a reasonably leisurely trip through the book, finding out all about it. Now, just to emphasize the importance of this particular stage, a psychology student I once had had read 400 pages of his psychology text. And he'd spent three months, roughly an hour a day, bashing his way through it. He was beginning to forget, at his 400th page stage, what had happened in the beginning. I asked him if he knew what the last chapter was, and he hadn't the faintest idea. And it turned out that that chapter was, in fact, review, summary, and conclusions. And he decided that if he had, in fact, read that first to get an idea of what the book was about, he'd have saved about 90% of his time. So that first general overview is very important. Now, it's that overview that enables you to make a decision as to your time and amount for a particular study session. And as I mentioned before, you mark this off with markers at the beginning and at the end. You then, of course, note down what knowledge you have on the subject and also questions that you want answered by the section that you're studying in that subject. Now, having done that, you're ready to apply yourself to the section that you're going to study. And you start off, of course, by overviewing that section. Now, in the overview, you check the title of the chapter, move on and cover the diagrams and illustrations. Cover them reasonably carefully. You want the information from them. Also look at photographs and illustrations. And you complete that through the chapter. Now, when you've finished that section, the overview, you go back to the beginning and start your preview. A preview is where you go through the print on the, first of all, concentrating, rather, on the beginning paragraphs and on the first sentence in each paragraph, skimming down with your visual aid to get the flow, getting the last sentence, the first sentence, skimming down, and so on. So that in the overview and the preview, you're getting the general outline of that information, firstly from the graphs and illustrations, and secondly, from the print itself. Now, next we come to the in-view. And here I'm going to use a little bit of film that we used earlier as an illustration. Now, in Western civilization, little has been known about the location of the mind before the time of the Greeks. And even the Greeks were comparatively ignorant. The philosopher Parmenides, for example, considered thought processes to be a function of light and dark and heat and cold. Herophilus assumed that they were in spirit form, and many other great Greek philosophers, including Plato, assumed that they were either spirits or functions of different fluids. Even the first Western scientist, Aristotle, attributed most of the qualities we now attribute to the brain to the heart. After the Greeks, religious dogma took the place of scientific inquiry, and little progress was made. It was not until the 16th and 17th centuries, in conjunction with Newton and the scientific revolution, that any real progress was made. It was discovered that the thought processes were located in the brain in the head, and they were associated with complex electrical impulses and chemical interactions. The brain also controls our nervous and muscular systems. Recent research is still trying to locate specific and general functional areas in the brain, but we still know very little. Most of the work is still to be done. So the in-view is where we begin to fill in the information which has not been filled in in the first two stages. Now, it's very important at this point not to waste time on those areas which give you particular difficulty. You simply make a note of them and pass on. Well, the reason for passing on is that if you do pass on, you're going to get information from the other side of that difficulty, so that when you return to it, it will be solvable in context of the information around it, and often, therefore, easier to solve. It also gives your, chan <laughs> your mind a chance to mull over that information 
and perhaps come up with a solution itself. In other words, you allow your mind to work creatively on the problem for a little while. Now also in the in view, you prepare to take notes. You don't actually take them because you don't really know all the information yet. You prepare. And you do this by marking in the margin. So for example, you might mark with a straight line in the margin an area that you thought was worthy of note. You might have a more wriggled or curvy line for an area that was giving you difficulty to which you wish to return. You could have question marks for areas you wanted to question, exclamation marks for things you thought were particularly notable. Now it's important here not to worry about ruining the book by using a pencil. If your pencil lead is soft enough, and if your eraser is a good one, you'll find that the damage is less than simply by turning the pages with your finger and thumb. So you carry on marking in the margins that information which you think is important. So now we come to the final review stage. Now remember that in the in view I told you not to get bogged down in particular problems. Leave them, come back to them later. Take the example of a jigsaw puzzle. 